Okay, the next touchstone is a pregame plan touchstone. And you think, well, what the heck is that? Well, it's how to prepare your mind to get the timing down, how to prepare your mind to uh, get up in the box and reduce all the variables so that you're successful in the game, as successful as you would be hitting soft toss. Now, you know, obviously, you know, you hope you have a good game, and, but you want to go into it completely positive, completely b b believing you're going to have a great game. You have to go into it f fully committed, you know, knowing you have a good quality swing. You have a professional swing, so don't hold back, you know, and that's where swing hard in case you hit it comes from and all that. But obviously, you know, okay, so the way it works is, is and, and we've gone over this, is you take your soft toss variables. And let's, let's uh, discuss these a little bit. And then what we'll do is, is just spend some time visualizing this. Because the whole idea is that soft toss is something that you do automatically. You do it so automatically that your brain is working at a really high level and you want to see what you do really well naturally. And so by paying attention to what you do re well well, naturally, you can actually work on your game concentration, game focus, game preparation. So, so, let's, so let's think about it. I mean, I gave you the example of like it's playing, hitting is like playing with blocks. Hitting is not in your uh, vocal center. It's not, it's not in your language center. It's not convincing yourself, okay, I'm, I'm going to swing hard in case I hit it or, or uh, I'm looking fastball until I'm not or anything like that. It's spatial. It's literally like soft toss. You feel the space between you. Okay, let, let's well, let's go over. Here. Number one, you feel the space between you. Okay, so that's what timing really is. You can feel the space between release and contact, and so you can feel how long it takes. Okay, so you feel the space between you first. This is what happens in soft toss. You feel the space. How much time do you spend thinking or meditating? Guys talk about. Uh, meditating about their hitting and stuff like that, but they never tell them what to meditate on. Or you know, they, you know, one a big mistake players make is they start to visualize and say, "Well, you got, well, you got to visualize." Well, if you visualize everything in motion, it's pretty hard to do, and you're not actually giving yourself the structures, the visual, uh, the geometry that your brain gives you when you're taking soft toss. And let me explain it and I'll get into it and explain it. Okay, in soft toss, the soft toss variables that you deal with automatically without even thinking about, that there, there are nine of them. You feel the space between you. There's an arm pendulum that you cope with. You just, you, you just know the person's not trying to trick you. And if you just kind of had that same, same perspective. But, but remember, it's like playing with blocks. In the first block, if there's one block, it's feeling this ball go through a 12 foot by 12 foot space. Like a 12 foot by 12 foot block. And I say blocks because it's easy to play with blocks. You don't think when you're playing with blocks, it's just very simple. You just, you know, you put one block on top of another. It's spatial. And if you wanna, you want to build a wall, you just, you're not thinking, you're just building a wall. You're, you, you know, and, and hitting's that way, it's spatial. Okay, and let me show you how it is. The second is, you know, the arm, the arm pendulum, you're coping with the delivery of the pitcher. All right, so in this block, you know the guy's arm's gonna come like this, and it's just, you're not, you're not worried about it. You're just like, okay, whatever. But you picture that happening, regardless of whether you even know you are or not. And number three is the, re the release location. You've kind of already picked out a spot where they're going to release it based on where they're starting from and, and where you kind of think they're going to release it, but you picked it out. And then you pick out the release, the time of release, okay, so, so you find the beat of that. Without even knowing you're doing it, you do that. And then, and then you pick out the trajectory of the toss. You see the trajectory of that little toss over a small area. And then you pick out a, a place where you want to hit it. You pick out a contact point. You, you've got it all figured out where you want to hit it. So you're standing there and you picked out a spot where you want it to, to travel to and hit it. And then you feel, you feel the beat between you know, release and contact. That just kind of happens naturally. And then um, you go access your repeatable swing. That, that, that is something that you do you know, if you're waiting in line to hit soft toss, you don't even know, but that's, 
that's pretty much all you do. You don't, you don't think about all these things. All you do is worry about, um, you just find a repeatable swing and you go up to bat and, and you do these things automatically, naturally. But, 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 but uh, these are the variables, nonetheless. You get a repeatable swing and uh, you get in a good position to hit. So those are nine variables that you don't even know you're doing. You're not even aware of these. Maybe the repeatable swing, you're sort of, you got a good swing, but you don't even know that you're thinking repeatable. You're not, you're just trying to get a good swing off. And you're just able to manage these automatically without even knowing what you're doing because it's such a small space. It's, it's within one block, a 12 foot by 12 foot block, and that's just an estimate, okay? But when you stretch it out, when you stretch it out to 60 feet, these variables become unmanageable. If you don't know what you're dealing with, these variables become unmanageable. And you have to know what they are so that you can look into them. But to keep things simple so, as, so, so that we don't have nine of them, we're going to pick out only four. Okay, so reducing the variables from really that pitcher is going to throw you speed, spin, location. Those are going to change as well as these things. So the variables are going to be incalculable. All right, but you're going to reduce the variables. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to, number one, is you're going to cope with the pitcher's delivery completely because you're going to be doing your drills. You're going to be doing your snap drills. You're going to, you're going to synchronize release. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to cope with delivery. You're, you're just going to handle it. All right. You're going to feel release and then you're going to pick out contact and that's going to give you a distance so that number two, you're going to, um, you're going to time the pitch. If you, if you pick out contact and you feel the beat of release, you will have a distance and you can actually think about that distance. Now, visualization, when you visualize, so when you meditate, if you want to meditate on something, it's good to visualize and meditate on something not moving, no, 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 no moving parts. But instead, because instead of visualizing the ball coming, you know, coming to you, and that's fine. If you can do that, that's fine. But you have to visualize the movement in context of the distance that between A and B, release and contact. So if all you do is get used to the feel of the space between release and contact. So if you go over in the clubhouse or whatever you want to do and go and, and you, you do your meditation because no one's really told you what to meditate on. But if you go, you meditate on, you know, you just kind of like, okay, he's going to go assholes and elbows, release. All right, so you go, you have in your mind though, A to B. You have in your mind release and you have contact. And, and you know, maybe you can feel yourself 60 feet away and you meditate on that. And then you feel A to B and you just feel the distance between the two spots. Just feel A to B. And when you start feeling A to B, then you can start, when you actually get in there and time the pitch, you're actually synchronizing the pitch, zoning with this zone in relation, with this static zone line in perspective, okay? It's important to spend some time with just without anything moving so that you can be, be better equipped to be able to have that zone, the timing uh, between the beats, the frequency that, that you're going to go from release to contact, you get that frequency and everything. If you have a static line, a distance between the two, you're so much better off because what you'll do is you'll feel the space between you at 60 feet. You'll start feeling the space between you. And maybe you have to meditate with your eyes open. You just kind of relax and just kind of feel 60 feet. Or you go down to the bullpen and you're meditating, but you're not meditating. You're not, you're just standing down the bullpen. Maybe you say, hey, you mind if I stand in? Sure, no problem. And you just stand out about eight feet and you just relax. And just don't say anything. Don't talk to anybody. Don't, don't listen to anybody. Just, 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 you know, release and lean, you know, lean and speed. You do these four things, which is cope with the pitcher. You time the pitch by uh, rehearsing contact, and you got the beat by coping the pitcher, and then if you have a distance, then you'll have timing. So, so you time the pitch, and then you find a repeatable swing, all right? And then finally, you just read the pitch. And by reading the pitch, what you do here is, you look, is, is of course, part of that is looking fastball. All right, so the last thing is, you, you, you kind of create a slot. You have your nitro zone. You want to have a nitro zone. 
So you get your, you put your nitro, well, ultimately you're going to put your nitro zone in the strike zone. So you don't, what the problem, what most players do is they have their nitro zone and then they stand off the plate and they just expect players are going to throw the ball inside off the plate or, or, or inside right into their wheelhouse when they're not going to do that. They're going to, they're going to, you know, cut the outside half of the plate. So you're going to have to lean to make that down the middle reach. All right. And you visualize a 10 foot line. So it, it always helped me as a young player, especially when I visualized a slot, a slot coming in, which it helped when I feel sideways. If you feel sideways, it's easier to feel a slot. It's like if I'm sideways, I can, it's almost like I feel a river running on the side of me. If I, it's almost like a river of baseballs flowing. Okay, one ball after another ball, like, like you know, like a, a, a chain of balls, like a string of pearls, okay, and it's on the side of me. And so I can hit this ball. There's, I think I did some research on this, which I, I need to double check, but I think there's 214 balls before release, in between release and contact. And so imagine, you know, you're going to hit it, boom, okay, you're going to hit this ball, or you're going to hit one less ball. Bam, you know, whatever ball you want to hit, you know, uh, you know, you imagine what ball you're going to hit, all right? But that way you're letting the ball come on the side of you. The balls aren't coming at you because it's a really, it's a horrible feeling, the perspective of, of the balls coming at you versus the balls coming on the side of you. Because if the ball's on the side of you, you can always find a way to get your hands through, not that you bring your hands in but that you're on the side of it and you let your hands go around your body and you hit it with leverage and hit it with your weight. All right, we'll get into that kind of stuff later, but, but uh, so that's really it. It's, it's, well, last thing I was gonna say is the, the 10 foot slot going out. So you visualize a slot, a nitro zone slot, and I'd like to also, that sideways help, I also, like kind of played a little peekaboo with it. If I kind of look like this before the pitch, obviously when the pitch comes, I have to be looking with both eyes. Um, uh, be sure you know what your dominant eye is, uh, even though both eyes have to see the ball. My, my left eye was my dominant eye, which is the back eye, which, I, which kind of, which is why I kind of like to look kind of peekaboo, because the more I was this way, the more I felt sideways. And then before the ball came, I'd straighten up, but I wanted to feel this first, and then I can feel that, okay? So I feel a slot right here. And then that's how you put the, your slot in the strike zone. And the other thing is you pick a spot from contact, and you draw a line out about 10 feet. So that's the last thing. You visualize a 10-foot line from contact out. And the reason why I say only 10 feet is because, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. You, it, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to visualize. It's easy to visualize, you know, uh, space between the 12 feet in soft toss, but it's much harder to visualize a ball coming from 60 feet or 54 feet or so from release to contact uh, from a major league mound. It's harder to visualize that whole path. So, um, uh, if, but, but you can do the reverse. You can go from contact and draw a line out about maybe, maybe 10 feet. You might not be able to visualize any, any, any farther than that. So your players, you have to let them know that it's okay to visualize out just only 10 feet. All right? So that's the pregame plan touchstones. Remember, this is so that you don't think. This is so that when you're on deck, you're visualizing things um, spatially you're playing with blocks you know you're doing your stuff you're creating your zone you're not thinking okay I'm swinging hard in case I hit it or I mean that that's kind of nothing you, you're not thinking um, um, I'm looking fastball till I'm not or whatever it's just I mean when you're getting soft toss are you looking for a fastball not even a fastball you're just looking for a certain speed of toss that's what you do when you're hitting you look for a certain speed of toss, which happens to be a fastball. So that's the speed that you're looking for, and that's the kind of toss you're looking for. It's a fastball toss. You're looking for that toss, and that speed of the toss, and you're looking for that, 
and, and, and then you visualize the space between it and then you're all ready to go. And that's, you're not thinking about words, you're not thinking about what you gotta do, you're just thinking like you would in soft toss. <laughs>